Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, I hope you're all doing well. And if you're a new viewer, welcome to Pie in the Sky Tours, your one-stop shop for all things Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 with a focus on VR. And here we are at Lampang Airport in Thailand. This add-on was created by Siam Flight and they've done a really good job at capturing the airport with the traditional architecture, the parking lot and the taxiways. So I'll leave a link for that below. In today's video, I'll be showcasing my best Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 VR settings for the Quest 2. I spent a lot of time dialing in these settings and I've managed to get my best results in terms of smoothness and graphics. But please do remember that this video is based on my PC, which has a 3080 GPU. If you have a 1000 or 2000 series card, I suggest you follow my settings, but turn each setting down by one and see how it runs and work from there. This video is intended to be used as a guide and I hope it helps you get your VR set up properly without any errors and with a good balance of performance and graphics. And please do consider subscribing to Pie in the Sky Tours because I can show you the best VR setups, tutorials and tours so you can see this amazing planet in all its digital glory through Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And please hit that like button if you find my content useful as it helps others find the video too. Alright, let's get on with the settings. Here you can see I've got the latest NVIDIA driver, version 496.49. And here we have the NVIDIA 3D settings located in the NVIDIA control panel. Just make sure you have Microsoft Flight Simulator as the program that you're actually making changes to. As I scroll down the menu, you can see my different settings which you can match yours to. One significant setting that I've changed is the max frame rate. Basically, what I'm doing is I'm capping the frame rate at 32 FPS. The reason why is because I want to try and keep the frame times as close together as possible from the slowest to the fastest frame times and that'll actually give you the smoothest performance. Do check out my video about improving VR using the CapFrameX software in the link above. In that tutorial I go through capping your frame rate in much more detail and explain exactly how you do that and why you do it so that might be worth watching. And here you can see the other settings I've got. I've got texture filtering set to on Texture filtering quality is performance. Texture filtering trilinear optimization is on. Threaded optimization is off. Triple buffering is set to global. Vertical sync is on. And VR pre-rendered frames is set to two. I've got game mode switched off. And hardware accelerated GPU scheduling turned off. And variable refresh rate is also turned off. Next we've got the Quest 2 settings. And here you can see inside my headset that I'm using runtime version 33. And here you can see I'm using the Oculus app version 34. And do remember to check both in the headset and the PC that you're running the latest version of this software. A quick tip here is to double check that your public test channel is switched on under the beta menu in the settings section. That'll give you access to all the latest updates and tools in the Oculus app. So it's really useful to do that. Also, please note that I found the best way to connect my Quest 2 to my PC is via the link cable. This is what works best for me, but your system might be different. And next we come to the graphics preferences within the Oculus app. And here you can see I've got the refresh rate set to 90 and the rendering resolution is set to 1.3 times, which is 4,864 by 2,448. These settings are giving me the best results. I was using 120 hertz before, but 90 hertz seems to work slightly better now. I'm not sure if it's the new driver or what, but basically that is the best performance I'm getting with these settings. So try it yourself. But remember what I said, if you do have a 2000 series card, you might want to pull that down to 1.1 or 1.2 times, but keep it at 90 and it should run really smoothly. Next, let's have a look at the Oculus Debug tool. I'm running this. I'm not running the Oculus Tray tool. I'm just running the Oculus Debug tool. All I do here is change the asynchronous space warp to disabled. That's the ASW, that's basically the motion reprojection. I don't like the artifacts, it's a personal preference of mine. I never use uh, motion reprojection. So I disable this. If you still find that you're seeing um, artifacts or like warping, that effect that it gives you in the sim, just hold down control one on the keyboard. And that's actually a shortcut to disable it if it's on. Another setting worth mentioning here is that I do have the link sharpening enabled as it tends to give a more crisp image. And last but not least, let's have a look at the general options in the simulator. We'll start off with looking at the traffic settings. I've got the real-time online set. Here I've got the show traffic nameplates on because I'm doing some multiplayer flying. Airport life and land and sea traffic are all set to 100, apart from the ground aircraft density, which is set to 10 because of my static AI, which I use. And you can see more information about that in my video above, which focuses on getting more realistic air traffic into the sim for that added bit of realism. I'm also using generic plane models for AI traffic, which is linked to my realism mod. 
but I've got the generic multiplayer playing models off and traffic variety is set to ultra. Next, let's have a look at my data settings. My data connection is all turned on. My data tracking reset day is set to one. I've got data limitation set to off. Data bandwidth usage limit is unlimited and the rolling cache is on with a limit of 100 gigabytes. And I send that to my D drive, which seems to work well. So you might want to try that too. And lastly, let's have a look at my VR graphic settings. Here you can see I've got the render scaling set to 100. I've got the anti-aliasing set to TAA. Terrain level of detail is set quite low because this gives me the best smoothness and still good clarity in the headset. So that's set at 105. Off-screen terrain pre-caching is at ultra. Terrain vector data is medium. Buildings, trees, grass and bushes are all set to medium. Objects level of detail is set to 100. Again, this gives me really good clarity and smoothness. Volumetric clouds is set to ultra. Text resolution is set to medium. Anisotropic filtering is set to eight times. Texture super sampling is at six times six. Texture synthesis is set to high. Water waves is set to high. Shadow maps at 1024. Terrain shadows at 512. Contact shadows at high. Windshield effects at medium. Ambient occlusion I set at low because that does take a huge hit on the performance. Cube map reflections are set to 256. Ray march reflections are set to high. Light shafts at low. Bloom is set to off because I find some of the whites are just too white and highlighted. So that kind of helps to limit it. And lastly, glass copy refresh rate is set to medium. So my advice is to go through each setting and just follow my guide accordingly and see what kind of results you're getting on your machine. If you're finding it's not running very well, just go through the settings and just downgrade some of them in the areas I mentioned during the video. And that should help tighten things up and get things working on your system too. I do recommend watching my other videos which are in the description below because these will help you dial in your system that much further. And remember, if you are into realistic add-ons from Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, do check out my tutorials playlist here. And do let me know if you've got any questions in the comments section below and we'll try and get back to you. And as always guys, I hope you find this content useful and I look forward to making the next video soon. And please do remember to like, subscribe and share the video if you find this content useful. And as always, take care and stay safe.